Today you're going to learn how to recreate this effect. But before we're going to start with the tutorial, I want to point out that this effect is only possible in the paid version. So you need the studio paid version to recreate this effect. The secret behind importing 3D models fast and easy is a workflow called USD, which stands for Universal Scene Description. These are 3D models where the material is embedded inside, making the process pretty easy for us. That means you can search online for USD files or import your 3D files into Blender and export them as USD. To follow along with this tutorial, I've provided the models I use in the description below. Let's start with the tutorial. When you shoot a video where you interact with your 3D animation, make sure you have a high contrast area that you can track. The contrast between my hand and the phone works perfectly for this. If you're done with shooting, take your graded clip where you interact with the 3D model, right click on it and create a new fusion composition. Now we first want to track our hand where we want to attach our animation. Select media in and hit shift plus spacebar to open the tool menu. Search for the tracker and apply it. Select it and now place your tracker on an area with high contrast. Track it in both directions. If the tracking stops, it doesn't matter as long as the tracking is correct for the time we want to display our animation. Awesome, all we need to do now is change the operation mode of the tracker to match move and everything we connect to this node will stick to our tracked point. Let's leave this on the side and get back to it later. Now we can finally start preparing our 3D scene. We need a few nodes to make this work, but don't worry, I'm here with you. Click in an empty space, hit shift plus spacebar and search for the U merge node. You want to add two of them, I'll explain why later. Hit shift plus spacebar again and search for U render as well. It's important that you choose the ones with the letter U at the beginning. This defines that we're working in the USD ecosystem. The U merge node is where we connect all our files that we'll bring inside soon. The U render node is important because it renders our 3D scene into a 2D image, so we can actually see it as a video. You also want to bring in another node called the U camera. Before we import our 3D files, it's important to understand that in Fusion, you can always decide what you're viewing in the two preview windows. You can simply do this by dragging what you want to see into your window. So let's choose U render for our right window and U merge for our left window. In the left window, you can now see your complete 3D environment, everything connected to our U merge node, like our camera. You can navigate around the 3D world by holding shift plus middle mouse to rotate or command plus middle mouse to zoom. If you're new to 3D editing, definitely play around a bit to get used to it. Now let's finally import our USD 3D models. Import the first model and before we connect it to our U merge node, we first want to run it through a U transform node and then connect it to our U merge node. This is because in the U transform node, we have all the position values where we can place our object in the 3D world. Why is everything black? If you zoom out in your 3D scene, you'll see that our car is way too big and sitting right inside our camera. So select your camera and move it backward. Scaling down the model also helps to get it into the right position. But before we scale down our model, we need to position our pivot point, which is the center point of our model. Select the U transform node, open the inspector, go to the pivot point settings and click on the pick button. Hold it down and drag it to the center of your car model. If you rotate around your 3D world, you'll see that it's not quite in the middle. So just use the values in the inspector to perfectly place it in the center. Now let's finally scale down our car. And because we set the pivot point in the middle, the scaling will also happen from the center. Use the scale values and the arrows to position it roughly in the center of our final render. So you can see the entire car. Awesome, we can see our complete car now in the final render. Let's bring in our next car models. Make sure to repeat the process for all three models and ensure that they all have the pivot point in the middle. After importing them all, our job is to align the models and make them the same size. Since they all share the same pivot point, this will be much easier. You can do this by using the controls in the inspector or by using the three arrows in your 3D environment. Once you're done aligning them, we can start arranging them in a circle. To do this, create a new U-Transform node and add it to one of the models. Now, take the pivot point and move it slightly in front of your car. This will be the center of our circle later. 
Now all you have to do is select the U transform node, press command plus C to copy it, click in an empty space and paste it two times. Then connect these copies to the other models as well. If you're asking yourself how I quickly connect and disconnect nodes, all you have to do is hold down shift. This lets you quickly add nodes into your node tree. Since we copied the first two transform node, all three share the same pivot point. Now we just need to rotate them around this pivot point. Since a full circle has 360 degrees, we can simply open a calculator and type 360 divided by 3, which gives us 120 degrees. So for the second node, enter 120 and for the third one, enter 240. Let's change the angle a bit as well and remember to do this for all three nodes. You can simply copy and paste the values. Now let's start creating the spinning animation. We'll do this in our first U merge node because all our stuff is connected to it. To make our whole circle of model spin, we will use the transform controls of our U merge node. But we still need to place its pivot point in the center to make it spin correctly around it. We can do this quickly by clicking on the U transform node where we previously changed the pivot point, copying this value with command plus C, then clicking back on our U merge node and pasting the values. Now, if we rotate our cars, they spin perfectly around the middle. That means we only have to animate these values here and everything will spin together. Create your first keyframe on the Y rotation where you want your animation to start. Move forward in your timeline and change the values to rotate the whole model a few rounds. This defines where your animation stops. Let's smoothen our animation by selecting our U merge node, opening the spline window and making sure keyframes are activated. Click the zoom to fit button, select both keyframes and hit S on your keyboard to smooth them. Now adjust the animation curve to your liking. Now all you have to do is connect our complete 3D scene to the tracker we defined earlier. Connect it to the green input of your tracker and to really see how it looks, drag your final output, your media out into the right window. Now we just need to position our animation. Select your U merge node, open the transform controls one more time and use the scale values and the transform node to place the whole model into your scene. Your animation already looks nice, but to blend it better into our scene and make it look like a hologram, let's add a glow node after it and increase the values to our liking. Also search for the scanline node, increase the line frequency and change the color to a light blue tone. You can also add different light sources like a dome light or a disc light to create different shading effects. Just make sure to activate the lighting by changing the light setting in your U render node from none to scene. Otherwise your lighting will not be visible in the final render. If you want to spice it up even further, you can add some HUD models that you find on different 3D platforms online. It's important that they are USDC or USDZ files because those have the shading embedded in the model. You can always use other model formats, import them into Blender and export them as USD so you can use them later in DaVinci. I'm super excited for future updates in DaVinci Resolve because the USD workflow was just the beginning of a bright era about 3D editing in DaVinci Resolve. Take this new skill, get creative and let's start creating.